right, now a very, very special number that's involved in a lot of applications of exponential growth and exponential decay. There's this very special number that was found by Euler. It's a very important number. So it's either called Euler's number because he's the guy that came up with it or found it. And didn't really come up with it, it occurred in nature. He discovered it. Um, it's also called probably more commonly the natural number. All right, so Euler's the guy who found the reason why it's labeled E is because of Euler. All right, so number E, it's a lot like pi. It's an irrational number. Number E is defined as an expression where you take the 1 plus 1 over n raised to the n. As n gets bigger, it approaches infinity, and that's, and it's really a limit. Again, you can't do limits to calculus, but it's really a limit definition. But basically, if you took this expression, plug a really, 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 really big number into it, right, a number shooting off to infinity, it would give you this decimal approximation, which is what your calculator does to find it. Right? And it, it keeps going. It doesn't stop at the, it's, it's like pi. It's a non-repeating, non-terminating decimal, meaning that decimal goes on forever. Right? But it is very important to mathematics and science, right? Because it's a natural number because it occurs in nature like pi. Pi has to do with angle measures and circumferences of circles and stuff like that. And it was discovered when they were doing their, their circles and their angles. Uh, the natural number E has to do with exponential growth, exponential decay. A lot of things grow exponentially and a lot of things decay exponentially. All right? So it occurs in nature. It's very important. And again, like I said, it has many of the same characteristics as pi. It's an irrational number. That's a decimal that goes on forever. All right. And again, it's a lot of it is thought of that way. All right. So our, so our natural number E. When we let E be the base, right, this is the natural exponential function. And usually when people think of exponential growth and exponential decay, this is the function they think about. All right. The base E, right? So... E is the base. Uh, ugly, irrational number, 2.718281 is my base. A ton of applications are modeled using the natural number E. All right, so we're going to set up the natural exponential function. All right, so A naught, and we just usually use A naught as a, in science, it comes from science, not always means initial value at time zero. So A naught, just remember, it means the same thing as that C we had earlier. It means the exact same thing. It's the amount at time zero, initial amount. Then there's this K. K is up in my X. If you look here, there's the K times T. K times T. All right. K is a constant, and it's considered the exponential growth or exponential decay. And it has to do with how fast or slow my model's growing or decaying as a percent of its size. So if it's a growth, K is positive, the, this is positive, the exponent is positive, I guess I should say. K is always positive, but this part comes out positive. It's decay, this is negative. Remember, negative really means it's that fraction, A naught 1 over E raised to the K times T. But we don't like to write it as the fraction, we like to write it as the negative exponent, but that's really what it means, so it's decay, right? The one half is the coming down and approaching zero case. K is very important. All right, K is what's called the growth constant or the decay constant if it's a decay model. And what it is, it's the relative percent growth or decay of an object over a period of time. So if the object grows by double every hour, it's growing by 100% of its size. All right, so that would be one. If it's decaying by half its size, all right, it'd be going down by 50%. So it'd be a negative 50%. And so it's the percent at which the size is growing or declining over a given period of time. All right, so the graphs of the decay and the growth model, well, if it's growth, K is positive, or I guess it should be decay is positive. What's up here is positive, what's up here is negative. All right, so I guess it should be K times T. It's the growth case. Right, we'd start out at time zero. This is where our population starts. So this would be our time. And then it would grow exponentially. That would be our A naught E raised to the K times T. Right, and again, it's a population, so we only go zero time, right, over time. So our domain is zero to infinity. The decay model would be the exact opposite of that. 
we still start at zero, so we'd start with our initial value up here, but this time we come down and approach the zero, right? Approach that y equals zero. Again, this is still time. And this would be my a naught e raised to the negative kt, the decay model. So increasing growth, decreasing decay. All right, so some applications of those. We'll get into some applications of those, and we'll do that in the next video.